Galaxy.com. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Coming to you live on a Thursday, January 6th. I'm your host, Josh Gessman. A lot of stuff to talk about tonight. The LA Galaxy get a signing across the board. I know everybody was waiting. You were wondering if it was going to happen. It's going to happen. Uh, we have another one that's coming up as well. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Maybe what you can expect. Lots of reports out there already reporting it. So we'll help you with that as well. Uh, we got some more info on the preseason tournament. When that's going to happen, sort of, uh, quote unquote, where it's going to happen as well. I got maps and different figures and stuff like that, um, as well as the local television deal and maybe why that's not, I don't. I guess, maybe not going as well as everybody thought it would, or maybe it's going exactly as everybody thought it would. So to help me do all that, he's back. It's Mr. Eric, the Portuguese Hammer Vieira. Eric, how's it going, buddy? I just muted myself. You can tell it's been a while since uh, since I've done this. Yeah, it's good to be back. Happy to be back. The chat is going hot and heavy right now. Got some good soup talk. You know, I, I'm a, a minestrone guy. Just going to throw that out there. What's what's your your go to soup? My go- uh, chicken noodle, or chicken maybe noodle. with chicken, maybe with some chicken and dumplings. I'm a big chicken and dumplings Ooh, okay. guy. Yeah, I know. It's, well, it's yeah, a little more carby cool. than you would expect. Yeah, 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 someone threw the the chicken and yoki in there, so that's kind of in, in the same neighborhood. So okay. I, I respect it. So yeah, it's soup season. It's 28 degrees where I'm at. So 28, getting, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that makes me feel good about all the soup. So thank you for the chat, for, for warming me up and for getting me ready. And now that I know how my microphone works, we're ready to get this show on the road. Yeah, by the way, p- uh, people commenting on my uh, my attire, I'm wearing a USA uh, polo today. Uh, and somebody said U.S. men's national team, but the mm. men wouldn't have four stars no. now, would they? <laughs> so I don't, I don't cover the women's team. So this is, I get to wear this shirt and I enjoy it. And it's one of my favorite shirts to wear around because people are all like, oh, USA. And they're like, yeah, do you watch the World Cup? I'm like, yeah, the women's World Cup. When they win, <laughs> you know, the men, well, who knows what's going to happen? But yeah. Uh, the times, well, well yeah. I got to show off my shirt. You know, Please. that's the, the beauty of, you know, having the galaxy as part of your identity. You know, you get to sh- all the, your Christmas shopping from uh, the people you love is pretty easy. They just get you galaxy stuff. So I right. got my new Mitchell and Ness galaxy, you know, since 96 co- collection nice. polo here. So, you know, got that. Got to wear the spoils from Christmas. So hopefully everyone had a nice holidays and a new year and ever, everything else that goes with it. Hopefully you stayed away from Omicron. It didn't catch you. It seems like it's catching everyone else right now. But yeah. uh, you know we're staying strong. Yeah, I was gonna say um, it, it's uh, it, it was it's been we're sort of dodging it left and right. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm 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 fully ready to just embrace. It's like in one of the disaster movies where the tidal wave is coming and you're just yeah. like and you see the guy standing there with his arms wide and he's like, just take me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, do- I'm done dodging, man. This is this is a lot of tough, uh, do, a I, lot of stuff out there. Yeah, I, I do feel like I'm one of the rare breed. You know, we, we're two years in. I don't think I don't think you've caught it either. I've I've dodged it so. That's, you know, whatever, whatever we're doing, you know, we can, we can give you tips and tricks if you need it. It's the Dr. Pepper. I'm pretty, I'm pretty convinced it's the Dr. <laughs> it's Pepper. The drink. Soup. It's, if, it's all yeah. the soup. It's all the good soup. Uh, everybody's asking, by the way, where, the, where are there our new microphones? If you didn't see, um, J lab and, uh, and the LA galaxy sent us out some, some really cool mics, um, some really uh, good USB sort of, um, you know, if you're getting into podcasting and you want to sort of, uh, get that start, you don't need to necessarily have a soundboard and XLR mics and all this other stuff. And so JLab uh, and the LA Galaxy sent out mics. 
they gave a mic to me, gave a mic to you. They gave one to mm-hmm. Kevin. They gave one to Sophie. Um, so, and I know they're shooting it out across all the podcasts uh, that sort of covered the galaxy. So that was a really nice one. Really, uh, they seem like they're they're actually pretty good quality. I was a little surprised. I took it apart, looked at it a little bit. I also gave mine away already. Um, because I have like 17 microphones in my office <laughs> um, and I use these wonderful ones. By the way, this is the Shure SM7B. If anybody uh, didn't know what the, what particular microphone I use, not that anybody cares, except it's the same microphone that recorded Thriller. So this is oh. this is a storied microphone, that's not this particular the, that, one. It's the same yeah, model. That's the I, I, I figured that, you know, MJ, you weren't. That didn't come straight from the Neverland Ranch. I figured as much. But yeah, <laughs> so same thing. But a big, big shout out to JLab Audio and the, the Galaxy for providing us with the ni- microphones. But just the behind the scenes, you have the we have our audio already set up, and we have my microphones that we already kind of have going. So I didn't want to tinker with it. And right, you're, you're <laughs> going to mess with the sound yeah, already. Mess with yours li- later. Exactly. I'm sure. exactly. I was already having so, sound problems. So that, that's uh, uh, the gesture is appreciated nonetheless. So big uh, shout uh, out. Yeah, absolutely. Just, sal- salute. Yeah, and then to all the other Galaxy podcasts also that they're sh- shooting those out to it's it's to be acknowledged i mean i know it's it's kind of a thankless thing and it's a hobby for a lot of people but at the same time like it's it's nice to just say hey we we know you're out there and we appreciate you and it's you know whatever it is you know to, to acknowledge it, it could be could have sent a sticker could have sent a, sent a, a beer koozie we would have been fine with that uh so just just to be seen is is nice so much appreciated yeah um i i would say that uh i'm i'm pretty much i'm pretty easy overall if you give me anything i'm pretty excited about it so uh, as I as, as I think I said on the last podcast, I'm willing to sell out for like yeah, even absolutely. a small amount of money I could sell out for. Um, that's never been a been a thing. Uh, LA Galaxy getting back to business signings. Um, yes, we did it. We're going to talk about Kelvin Leardam here in a second, officially signed. Uh, we're going to tell you about who the other signing probably is, read between the lines, um, and uh, and when possibly that could happen tomorrow on Friday, maybe. Um, probably read between the lines. Um, so, uh, we sort of have that stuff set up, but I wanted to start because I need to sort of revise the preseason schedule that I talked about on Monday. Now we tell you all the time, like whenever we say things that things can change, like things can still change. And with this surge of this particular variant and just how everything's going and traveling and say, we expect things to change and we don't expect things to sort of go. But on the preseason schedule we had talked about on Monday that Kevin and I had talked about Monday, which by the way, I got the information on Monday. And so then the preseason schedule was announced on Wednesday and it changed from Monday to Wednesday, just a yeah. little bit in terms of, of how they were doing it. And so we can sort of now go over that and, and talk a little bit about it in, in terms of, you know, what we are expecting at the stadium and all those different things. Um, the preseason schedule does not include the uh, the Golcella. Hold on. I got a, I got a graphic for that. Uh, <laughs> Golcella yet uh, at the Empire Polo Grounds. We're going to show you sort of where that's taking place and and what that we're expecting from that. It doesn't include that, but you can see that it's funny because I looked at this and I'm saying, well, where are they going to play that preseason tournament? And then I did my math and I'm like, oh, I see where they're going to play it. And so uh, we can sort of figure out where they're going to play this, understanding that the LA Galaxy have a game on the 27th of February um, that is rapidly coming up against New York City FC. So having said that, uh, the LA Galaxy will report to Dignity Health Sports Park on January 15th. That's sort of I think a little bit of a misnomer because I think they're actually reporting for physicals on that day. And then the next day they actually come in and and do the thing. Um, If I remember correctly, Eric, last time, I think somebody, one of our listeners actually is around some facilities where they do the physicals and stuff like that. Because I think I got got info last time on some different things that that, that came in. Yeah, if if I I was going to say, if if you're an avid follower of the players on Instagram, that's always a fun day because everyone's coming in. The boys are back together. Taking pictures of each other. Pictures, yeah greeting the new guys, getting it together. So it's always a fun fun thing to kind of follow along on social media from the player's perspective. But yeah, you also got a little bit of a inside scoop on the actual... <laughs> Who knows? You know, who, checks. It is yeah, what it is. It, yeah, I mean, you can listen. None of this stuff happens in a bubble. That's what we always right. try to say. It's like, <laughs> it's like, well, how could they possibly know? I'll, I'll be honest. The Kelvin Leardam one was very quiet. They did a yeah. very good job. Nobody guessed that one. Nobody had that. Nobody had reported it. Maybe if anybody knew, they were very quiet about it. Um, so that's good. Good for them. Um, you know, I'm I'm all about the the cone of silence. If you if you yeah. want to go that way, um, and it worked well for that one. Um, the next one it hasn't worked as well, and this is what but, happens. Somebody's always going out to dinner. Eric, somebody's always yeah. telling a friend, somebody's always, you know, somebody runs into somebody, you know? Yeah. It also depends on the player and kind of where they're located and things like that. And their, their relationship with the, the media as well. You know, Kelvin Leardan, we'll talk about him a little bit more, but it's not, you know, it's not like this is a, you know, a bombshell that people were waiting for this, you know, big deal to happen is, you know, 
we'll talk about the signing itself, but I, I can see why this one, you know, wasn't necessarily on everyone's radar. Yeah, it was uh, maybe a little under the radar. But anyway, yeah. we go back to the uh, schedule. So January 15th, January 16th is when the LA Galaxy will start, quote unquote, preseason. The mandated report date, I believe, is the 16th. Um, that's the league mandated report date. And then the, so the 15th is physicals. 16th is that mandating report date. That's when they'll actually be at the stadium. Um then Saturday, January 29th, we thought this was going to be one of the open door gated games, but it's actually going to be a closed door scrimmage now. Um, and this is Saturday, January 29th. The LA Galaxy will play against Toronto FC at Dignity Health Sports Park closed behind door scrimmage. Um, I might be able to go to that. I don't know. We haven't really talked about it yet, but usually the closed door scrimmages we we could, the, the press can go to. So if I get yep. a chance to go and to, I'm sure I'll love to see 15 minutes of players playing. <laughs> and in the past, they've they've also put that on. Uh, either the YouTube channel. So I know we're going to talk TV rights in a little bit also, but usually, you know, sometimes those games they put on, uh, you know, so pressure, pressure your, your LA galaxy admin say, we want to see this game behind closed doors. Cause if Chicha scores in a closed, closed door scrimmage, we might, we might not hear about it, especially <laughs> if he's, <laughs> that happened if he's not, a, not supposed to be here or not supposed to be playing That's whatever right. happened with that saga. But, but yeah, so I, th- I think it's possible that we may fans may still ha- be able to get their eyes on the game, right. uh, but it is still going to be a closed door, you know, it was different than what we thought. So uh, we go January 29th. That's the closed door against Toronto FC. Uh, and then you're going to have the Saturday, February 5th. This is a gated game. By, by the way, that was a little bit of a debacle uh, with the Galaxy uh, announcing that uh, that this these games, that the preseason games were coming out. And in the way it was worded, it was sort of worded as in season ticket holders would have to pay for their tickets for these preseason games. And then if you read through after they said dial nine, this number, and then go into here and blah, 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 it would say that it, it said that if you buy season tickets, then all of your stuff is included. And that it was just, it was awkwardly worded a little bit. And so eventually it came out. If you were a season ticket holder, preseason games are included. You don't have to worry about it. It's if you want to buy other tickets for the preseason games, then there is a pre-sale for season ticket holders outside of your a lot of the mount. So nobody freak out about yeah, that. I was going to say, I, I like to be the pessimistic hammer and really go negative and, and think the worst sometimes of the LA Galaxy. But when I saw that, I was like, there's no way they're going to cut those games out. Like with attendance being the way it was, I was like, they weren't going to cut those games out. So it, it's always been included. It will continue to be included. And I'm glad to hear that that was resolved fairly quickly and that the galaxy got in front of it. They didn't let it keep festering and letting it be. They just, it's very simple. You put a tweet out, you kill it right then and there and you're yeah. done. You move on. Yes. Yes. But it was 15 minutes of, of yeah. scrambling around <laughs> and complaining. So, um, that was, that was that. So we got, but it's through not that. hard to fix. No, it's not. So everything's fine. You're fine. If you have season tickets, you have these games. If not, you can buy tickets to these games as it comes. Uh, so that's Saturday, February 5th. The LA Galaxy will host the New England Revolution, 7.30 p.m. Pacific time kickoff. Uh, then on Saturday, February 19th is the last game at Dignity Health Sports Park. This is one we sort of didn't know about in terms of how they were running it. And it seems like maybe they shifted some of these and moved them around because they figured that that first preseason game um, wouldn't be very exciting. It would probably be 15 minutes of actual starters and then everybody else right we, we've seen that before we yeah. all we've all we all know that uh so saturday february night february 19th it'll be dc united um at dignity health sports park a 3 p.m pacific time kickoff and that one is included in your season tickets as well but eric if you look at this there doesn't seem like there's a lot of room in there for a quote-unquote preseason tournament right but there is a gap there is a gap and <laughs> a there, there's a, a gap 14 day the, gap 14 day gap and if it's going to be a tournament where maybe if you have a, a deep roster and you're not, these guys aren't going to be playing full nineties where you're just rotating. I could see a scenario where, you know, maybe just on a few days rest or you be, you know, do some scrimmages back to back. I can see it being a thing. So the only issue being it being like a full blown out Golchella celebration fans on site, big deal. Probably not going to be that. <laughs> That's uh, what yeah. we were hoping. We I'm, were hoping I'm not feeling something that. like that, but yeah. it's probably going to be more like, it's going to look more like the closed door scrimmage than it's going to look like a preseason game. Well, that, that's it, that's what it feels like. And that's the thing. There are 14 days basically between the February 5th game and the February 19th game, right? Almost exactly 14 days, right? Yeah. So there is time to go to, you know, Indio and there's time to go and play those games and do your thing and then come back uh, right now, by the way. And according to Stephen Goff, which, by the way, uh, Stephen Goff had to tag me in tweets. Uh, this last couple of days, so I'm feeling pretty proud time. of myself. I am pretty so big. You got, time you got right a now. microphone. You got name checked by oh. Goff. What I mean, a what a day! This it's been it's been a lot. Um, but uh, but he did he did say uh, that the teams right now that were scheduled to play in this are DC United, Red Bull, Sounders, Rapids, and Galaxy. 
right? Those are the teams that we think are coming. Now, those are all subject to change. And he even he prefaced it with like, you know, 17 yeah. words before this was like, this could change, this could change, <laughs> this could change. But that's sort of where it looks at right now. And DC United is actually spending a lot of time in Florida uh, and then flying out for this tournament, doing that. And then you see, again, they'll be at the the game at Dignity Hill Sports Park on February 19th as well. So um, all of these games and New England, I think, is going to play LAFC. So that's they're in LA for a couple of those games as well. I was going to say, Bruce is not going to miss a chance to to have a preseason in Southern California, you know, when he's now based on the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. Bruce wasn't going to miss a chance to be out here. So not surprising that the Revolution are playing out here as well. Uh, the big, Sebastian Legit's Revolution. This, yeah, Sebastian Legit's Revolution. Oh man, it just it doesn't <laughs> it's, feel it's right. Weird. It it's just, weird. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it. This it's very much a Wayne's World. It's like a new pair of underwear. Uh, if you don't know that one, um, you should probably watch it. My wife has never seen Wayne's World, by the way. It's one of the oh. things that makes me think our marriage might not last. Uh, especially whenever I ask her all the time, because I'll say Zang, and she'll just look at me, and I'll be like, nothing. There's nothing there. Okay, cool. I just said excellent, and you didn't I, know. I like the the countdown. I do that one a lot. Three, two, <laughs> one. Yeah, it's not good for podcasting. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't um, work. It doesn't no. work on podcasts, yeah. No, but um, so that's sort of where it sits. But, you know, somebody said, hey, I looked at what, you know, I know what's out there at Coachella when Stagecoach, whenever it happens, there's no soccer fields out there. There's no stadiums out there. So what are they going to do? Just throw it together? And I'm going to say, correct. There are no <laughs> soccer fields out there. <laughs> I'm like, uh, yes, that's okay. So if they can throw giant musical festivals, like the, some of the biggest in the world with Stagecoach and Coachella, um, but they can't put together some soccer fields on some nice flat green grass ass out there they could they could do that um if this ends up the way that i would hope it would be eric it would be very spring trainee where it would yeah. sort of be like you could sit on the sideline and there's like a little orange rope and you're not supposed to go past the rope and you bring your beach chair and you can sit down and woohoo, this is fun i actually think that there's a good chance that fans will be able to go to this okay. i don't know in what quantity then this is there, there's no inside information that i have by the way this is just me guessing because you're outside you're in the desert you're away from la county um all of those things sort of fit into, hey, you might actually be able to go to this. So if you are planning on doing that, expect it to be a little bit festival-y. I mean, how else, you know, and, and we went over, I think, on Monday how AEG owns this and how AEG, like, so Golden Voice is the people who operate and I think own the Empire Polo Club or the Empire Polo Club lets Golden Voice operate it. I don't know if they actually own it, but they let them operate. So Golden Voice, AEG Presents owns Golden Voice and AEG owns AEG Presents. There's the family tree of how this this goes down and why it's wheels a, within wheels. Yeah. yeah, it's just, you know, it's a little system of steps and, and all that stuff. So um, there's plenty of green grass out there. You're not going to, there's only five teams you can only play two yeah. games at the same time there's exactly. plenty of room to train i mean this is this makes there's lots of hotels out in palm desert and yeah, around coachella and at coachella and in indio right i mean this is this and and john john makes a great point in the chat it is the polo grounds so polo last time i checked is played on grass so there's sport grass you know to some degree there and you're right you, you can fit two fields there which you know that that's not difficult and then as far as getting fans there that's the part where I'm curious to see how that works because I think, uh, you know, <laughs> if you're not in the know uh, and you weren't following, uh, does DTK follow on Twitter? Uh, obviously now with Dennis DeClosa gone, that uh, Twitter account needed to be repurposed. Right. So, you know, it became the official uh, Gochella. So if you're not following at Gochella, uh, go check that out. But I think there was a lot of buzz and excitement when that was announced. And I think that if this, if the Galaxy wanted to make this like a yearly event or a festival, which they're it's kind plan, of a no, which they're it's a no-brainer. On. It's that, it's a no-brainer yeah. because the space is there, the festival infrastructure is there. Uh, you know, so it just seems like uh, I don't know if it's how it's going to get set up, but at the same time, if they wanted to make this an event, it's it's a, a smart idea and a good call to make it an event. So I, I could see it happening, but you're right. I don't know to what extent because if it is going to be bring your beach chair, sit behind the orange rope, you know, how many people can you really accommodate by doing that? And if you're going to have, you know, large throngs of people, there, there's a lot of other things, you know, bathrooms and, and food and concessions and a lot of other stuff that goes into it, which they make work for the major festivals. But I don't know if, if, I if think, it's, if I it's think not the same people running it, but there's we'll see. I don't know. I, I'm just I, I, I would be very hesitant <laughs> to be the guinea pig on the first one. Probably wouldn't want to do uh Start starting the mud pit out by the the porta potties. I, I wouldn't get involved in that right away. It, it could be the fire festival, right? I mean, yeah. this could this could be fire <laughs> festival bad, but it's not going to. They they have done this. I imagine 
that the LA Galaxy don't quite have the same draw as like Beyonce or you know yeah. or, or or Kanye, right? I mean, I I, I think the Galaxy are great, um, <laughs> but you know at the same time they it's it's difficult for them to fill up a twenty five thousand states uh, st- seat st- stadium. So you're not going to get twenty five thousand people who are going to go out to the desert. You may get eight thousand people, which would be cool. Maybe you get five thousand. You that's thought high. that was generous. I know. <laughs> no, I feel, I feel generous. <laughs> did I tell you that you, I don't know if you listen but, to Monday's but show. Yes. Where you'll get is with the Sounders playing and with, you know, you, this becomes a destination because, you know, if, if you're in Seattle and, you know, in February, it's probably come, it's probably, you know, attractive to come and spend a week here. And they, so they're good for, you know, what, 500 fans, 800 fans. So maybe a thousand, a couple thousand. I think, I think you're being generous. But I'm yes. being generous. <laughs> being, being they haven't announced dates yet and stuff like yeah. that. But yeah. Um, but it, it's 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 one of those things. Like, I don't know if you listen to the Monday show, but I've been getting, given permission to possibly go to this. I mean, my wife was like, great. So can, can, I, can, I, can we go to Palm Springs and rent a place? And then you go do whatever you want to do and I'm going to be fine. I think she told me I also need to take Jake with me whenever I go to. Like he's going to just strap him to the chest and Jake's, just. Jake's first podcast. There I, you I'm, go. I'm, I'm excited. So, uh, that's, uh, that's where we're going. Is everybody in the chat room trying to give their like go to karaoke sign a song all of a sudden? Cause you can't go wrong with single ladies from Beyonce from Logan. Uh, mine is uh, spice girls want to be obviously that is my, that is my <laughs> go to karaoke song or wow. you've lost that love and feeling, which is, yeah. uh, it's a little dated now. I, is, I would rather go dated. spice girls. Yeah. That's, that's a good call. Okay. Yeah, good. I, I got friends in low paces always gets, always gets the room going. Why not? Uh, and then, and then if you want to be a menace, you can always choose. Rick Astley's never going to give you up. Also a solid choice. A solid choice. Okay. Also a solid choice. Good, good, good. Very good. Um, let's move on here a little bit. Uh, Pat Noonan. And I know this is, we're sort of like sliding sideways here for a second, but let's talk about Pat Noonan. Now the new head coach at FC Cincinnati uh, picked up Kenny Arena uh, and picked up uh, Dominic Kinnear uh, to be on his coaching staff. So you got Noonan, former LA Galaxy assistant coach. And by the way, used to come on this podcast once a month before it was cool. Um, he would, he would come on and Pat, hipster, Pat, hipster he, COG. He, he yes. is, he is old school. Um, Pat is great. Um, one of the absolute best guys. And, and by the way, Dominic Kinnear is in there as well. And Dave yeah. Sarakin. I mean, just the absolute up top, top guys and Kenny arena. Kenny arena was always ridiculously nice. Um, so all of these guys, it's kind of like, I'm almost, I'm, I'm in that mood where I'm like, Hey, I don't cover FC Cincinnati. I'm going to root for them just because I like Pat Noonan and just because I like Kenny Arena and just because I like, you know, these guys, they're such a good guys. And I really feel like that Noonan and Kenny and Dominic Kinnear have the ability to turn around that team and actually make that they spend money, Eric. It's not like they don't spend money. They just haven't had the the success from any of that yet. And And these guys, I think, can do it. And then they have the stadium and the fan base. So like the the, the infrastructure is there. They're they're good to go to to make something happen there in FC Cincinnati. So best of luck to them. But you're right. Same thing with Bruce and the revolution. You have a soft spot for him. Obviously, if the galaxy were to play him, you're always going to root for the G's. But you know, when you see him out there, it's just like old times, like a warm blanket, you know, just feels good to watch Bruce coach a team. So you're, you know, you're always going to root for him. So the same thing with all, uh, you know, Pat Noonan and the gangs and kind of getting all, uh, when I saw all those names, I was like, yep, yeah, yeah, that's a galaxy guy, galaxy guy, yeah. another yeah. galaxy guy. Yep. <laughs> so it makes all those connections there. So, a good move by him by by getting uh you know people who are all familiar with each other. I think that's what makes uh, a good coaching staff. We saw Greg Vanny do something similar, you know, with Kalichman, just people who he knows. Get, you know, you bring your own crew with you. So uh, it was pretty cool to see how he assembled it there. Well, is Ezra Hendrickson? He's uh, is he over at Chicago right now? Isn't he Chicago? And I think Junior Gonzalez went to join that. That sounds right. That, that as well. Right. I mean, the Paulo Nagamora is around as well. He I went mean, to Houston. Yeah, he's he, Houston. He, so said coach. I mean, the, the galaxy tree is <laughs> is long and wide. <laughs> strong. Good at that. Next. The state of the LA <laughs> Galaxy is strong. <laughs> Uh, good times. Um, I'm waiting for the LA galaxy to sort of come out with like a state of the LA galaxy speech. Like when is that like I've, absolute PR pump up, you know, uh, propaganda job going to come like forward and be like, Chris Klein gets up there and starts beating on a desk and is like, <laughs> the state of the galaxy is strong. Well, you know? They, they kind of, they've done that in the last few seasons. I think, you know, they've had kind of town, town halls where, you know, on YouTube and people go on and they bring players out and kind of hype up the season. So, that's not totally unheard of. You know, I don't know that we're going to get total, you know, the, the flag comes down behind him and he starts, you know, you know, Dixie starts playing in the background and we, we start getting ready to go to battle. But but that's not unheard of. But just a press conference in general would also be nice just to kind of see 
who's in charge, what's happening. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get to signings. Or is that our transition where we talk about it now? Uh, yeah, who's let's making do it. these signings. Yeah, let's 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 go over uh, the LA Galaxy officially announced today. Uh, 31-year-old uh, right back and a guy who came is coming over from Miami, but you probably know him better from uh, Seattle. Uh, Kelvin Leardam is now joining the LA Galaxy. This is a free agent signing, assigning a two-year contract with a club option for 2024. Uh, he's a right back. We'll call him a backup for Julian Araujo. Um, also, probably he can play in a wing back position, but also Julian Araujo can play in a wing back position. And so this could also be one of those that gives Greg Vanny the flexibility, as we've seen, to push Julian forward, drop somebody else into defense. Um, close to 9,000 minutes of MLS experience, nine goals, 13 assists over his... What is it? Five, six years? Five, five years? Well, yeah. Yeah. Fit, five years. This will be his sixth season in and, MLS. So 2017 to 2020, he was with Seattle. Um, and he also has playoff experience, which I, I think when you're talking about building a team that is going, supposed to be in the playoffs, right? Next year, you expect them to take a step forward. They're going to be in the playoffs. You need guys with some experience. Um, and Lear Dam himself, especially whenever he was with Seattle, had plenty of playoff experience, over yep. a thousand minutes of, of playoff experience, 14 games played, um, 11 games started, one goal um, in the playoffs. And so, uh, you know, this is a guy I think who has a lot of talent. Um, this is a guy who I think is a good depth piece, but also thinking to the future, perhaps if Araujo is one gone with the Mexican national team mm -hmm. or two is gone as in sold, you need somebody with some experience. And this is one of the Ramiro in our chat room, excuse me, in our discord, uh, said yep. that he had him as the top ranked available right back MLS player, right? I know there's a lot of things, but like, it's like if you're within the league and you're a free agent and you're available, he had Leardam as the top ranked guy in the galaxy got him. So, um, to me, whenever I look at this, I say, yes, I checked a whole bunch of boxes off, gave the LA galaxy depth, um, a base salary of $180,000. The guaranteed that's, salary goes almost up to 300, but the base salary is 180. So take the 180. That's, that's the important but, one. But that's a steal, even at the the higher end of the price. When you think about some of the salary of some of the defenders that we've been paying in the past, who don't have that pedigree, and so that's something I know the Panda likes to make a point of. You know, who who are the players left on this roster who were on the LA Galaxy's last playoff run? And I think they're all gone now. You know, there's there's no one left who has that experience. But Lear Dam is coming from a team with championship pedigree, and unfortunately, that's where the Galaxy are at now, where they don't have guys who they have in house who have that experience. So you need to go and bring players in who have been on a championship locker room and have been contributors to those teams. And while this, you know, Leardam is not a Messi, he's not a Ronaldo, he's an MLS free agent signing, but it is one of those, oh, I know that name. This is someone who I remember being a solid player uh, in Seattle. So this is someone who, you know, has a reputation for being consistent throughout the league. And so I, I think it is a solid pickup, especially when you consider the salary that he's coming in at. Uh, he's going to be a good depth piece, like you said, for Araujo. So, uh, you know, when, when you say, you know, we have Kel Kelvin coming in, and he's gonna, uh, you know, be the temp for uh, for Julian Araujo. That that's a that's a temperature joke, you know, for all the uh, all those the, the science the Kelvin, science nerds out there. The, the yeah, Kelvin. Kelvin is gonna be that's the temp. What, that's for you're Julian Araujo. You, yeah, decided, any, you, you decided to do that, huh? Okay, that's why <laughs> I went for it. Uh, and, but also with the signing, out, also pretty. Uh, the Galaxy did my favorite thing, where when they signed a defender. They show the highlight package, and it's just all him scoring goals. So you're like, oh, we got a goal score. It's like, no, he has nine <laughs> goals over six years. So, but but he did have more goals than uh, than Nashville had to cut together for Ethan Zubak. So I'll I'll give him that. Even as a defender, uh, he was able to have more goals. So I, you're like, is this guy a winger? Is he a no? He's a defender. He's a defender. But they were just <laughs> the highlight package is is always goals, even when it's defenders. You you always know they're stretching for uh, for for goals whenever they have to show seven different angles of one goal, right? <laughs> like that's a, Ethan Zubak will go into Nashville. I was I did a Nashville podcast that was covering that club and country. Um, very very nice guys um, over there, and they were super nice. And they're like, so like, what's the upside with Zubak? I'm like, eh. I'm like, he works I, hard. I, I, he works hard. He, he tries. Hard. He's, he really him, tries. We called him the Chicho Whisper. Does that? I mean, I and I like him. He seems like they're like, well, is he like a really good locker room guy? Eh, you know, I didn't He's hear there. about him. He, he <laughs> has been in the locker room. He's been in locker rooms. That's this, the thing. It, it's totally unfair. It's like, and I know, and I said this on the podcast too. Is like, I will hear about guys if they're either really great locker room guys or really bad locker room guys. I don't hear about eighty percent of the middle guys, right? Which is a good thing. Yeah. You don't want to hear about everybody, you know, yeah. whole deal. So, um, but yeah, I was like, yeah, he, 
go. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> talk, let's talk about Dave Romney. Um. So anyway, no, it was uh, it was fun. Here's what uh, Greg Vanny had to say. He said, "Kelvin is an experienced championship winning player, and we are pleased to bring him to our club. His quality provides more depth and versatility to our roster, and we look forward to him playing an important role in the team." Um. That was interesting. Greg Vanny provided that quote. Let me give you another quote. Uh, We are excited to add Kelvin's experience and winning mentality to our team, and we believe he will integrate quickly into the group, said LA Galaxy Technical Director Jovan Karofsky. Um, There. That's I wanted to I wanted to put both those quotes in because uh, you and I have been talking not online about just the responsibility for the signings who is taking we and we've mentioned there has been no press conference that says i'm in charge i'm the person this is how it works we have no flow chart we don't i mean we're telling you what that flow chart is because we we have some understanding of how it's working but nobody has come out and said that to the fans right. nobody has said i'm taking response here's the flag i'm planting in the ground it's my fault if it doesn't work and you can blame everything on me and it seems like that's intentional because i it's i'm the one who's brought that up. i don't know if it's, it bothers anyone else or if it just bothers me that there's no official announcement on who's in charge and who's making the moves. Obviously, we know Greg Vanny has a hand in it because he's the head coach and the, he's going to you know have a say in the players that are brought in. So obviously, we know Vanny's involved. But you know, as far as who else is getting these players across the line, you know, we've kind of alluded to it and mentioned to it that you know Chris Klein is probably involved and Jovan Karofsky is the one coming out with a quote uh, that he's a technical director. But you know, Technical director has different meanings at different clubs. Does that mean that he's, you know, kind of filling in that void that Dennis DeClosa left? Is the technical technical director now doing general manager work? So who's who's you know responsible for this? But I also think it's intentional that they're not putting a name on it because if something goes sideways, they could say, "Well, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. My name wasn't on it." And so you know, it just DTK, you knew who you know who was who was the boss. You knew who was in charge. You know who was making the moves here. We don't know who's making the moves, and that's a little bit frustrating. Uh, it just seems like they're they're afraid to to put their names on it, and I think probably rightfully so because you know if, if Chris Klein and Jovan Karofsky came out and said we're the we've now filled in the role as general manager and technical director, we're involved in player personnel signings. Uh, I think a lot of the fan base would be pretty upset with that because of you know past track record. They they haven't given a reason. Uh, for the Galaxy to be thrilled that they're the ones in charge making all the decisions. So I think that's probably why they're hesitant to put their names on it. But at, at that same token, you maybe need, if you're the one making the decisions, rip rip the Band-Aid off. Be transparent. Because now you have this kind of secrecy, who's doing what, who's in charge, and, and you don't know. And, you know, unfortunately, it could be could end up being Vanny who becomes the fall guy for it because he's the one who's the face of it. And that's that's not necessarily fair either if he ends up taking the blame for, you know, the mistakes of some other people in the front office. So... Uh, it's it's frustrating to me, but I don't know if it bothers anyone else or if I'm just a weird guy for for you know wanting someone to have some 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 name on it, some responsibility, some transparency. I think that maybe, and I will speak for myself. We got a little spoiled with Dennis DeClosa being so open about what he was trying to do and how he was trying to do it. Um, Bruce wasn't that way, although Bruce would tell you. It's just you weren't smart enough to understand. He would tell you, though. He would tell you. He's like, listen, this is what I'm doing. You won't get you know, it. But You knew Bruce was in charge. Right. You knew Bruce was in charge. Um, you know, Kurt Anolfo was, I think, too quiet and needed to be way more outspoken. Oh. And, and to that point, Kurt Anolfo did not seem like he was in charge. Exactly. And that would yeah. be Chris Klein and Jovan Karofsky and Pete Vianis, right? That was that time. Um, you know, Siggy Schmidt said that he was in charge. Yeah, maybe not as much as probably everybody thought he was and maybe not as much as Siggy thought he was. Um, and, and, and I'll, here's my two cents again, Siggy wanted to be in charge, but also gave hints that he wasn't allowed to do everything he wanted. So you knew he wasn't fully in charge either because he gave hints that there were people kind of blocking some of the things he wanted to do. So that also, you know, gives some clues. Guillermo with the language barrier there, I, I don't know, and I can't tell you. I'll tell you that Greg Vanny so far has been as open. If you ask him a question, he's always been open with the answers. Getting to him can sometimes be a little harder, um, and I think he's been way more quiet than I would have expected him to be. Remember, there was no exit interviews or anything like that, so we got to that. Uh, let me get to these two super chats. Uh, Logan says, I won't be surprised if Dom takes over at the end of the year like he did with us. It reminds me of Kurt Anolfo signing in 2017. Not wrong, by the way. Uh, yeah. Noonan being <laughs> thrown a little bit into the deep end here, but at the same time, with the coaching staff that he has, I would not be surprised at all if that team is just fine. Um, so yes and no, but 
maybe a little more no, uh, Logan, and thank you for the $5 Super Chat. Appreciate that. And Patrick gives us a $5 Super Chat as well. He says, will we get a designated player number 10 in January? Uh, January of 2023? Probably. Um, this January? Oh, no. I, I have no well, we, well, we did for about 15 minutes yesterday, right? We we kind of had a number 10 almost. Can we talk about that for a little yeah, bit? let's talk about it. Okay. Albert Al- Rusnak. Uh, Albert Rusnak. Now, if you don't know, and we're in a group chat with somebody who didn't know, and I hope he's listening to this, he's Eric not. and I are like, <laughs> Eric and I are like. He definitely doesn't listen. No, no, he doesn't listen. <laughs> Eric and I were like, holy jeez. And the, the whole thing was Keith Costigan, um, who is a what would we call Keith? He's, he's more of an on-air personality. He has some reporter functions in him. He has, he has cachet. He, he has, he, he, he knows, he knows things. And he knows this player and he knows this agent. Well, I know because I checked whenever I saw this come out. Um, and it said basically that, um, Albert Rusnak was expected to sign with the LA galaxy. Um, and that was all of a sudden a woo, everybody's swarming because when you say Rusnak and you're like the guy who constantly just tears the galaxy apart, yeah. the guy who basically has double digits goals and assists every year he's been in major league soccer for like the last five, six years. Um, a guy who was a designated player for Real Salt Lake, a guy who was rumored to possibly be eyeing a targeted allocation money deal with Seattle. And if the, if Seattle can offer a targeted allocation money deal, then why can't the LA galaxy argue, argue to yeah. And I try really hard, especially on the discord. I'm a little more open on the discord just because it's not as public, um, certainly as Twitter. So if you join our discord, you do get some insights into stuff. So whenever this was going on and it went on for about 15 or 20 minutes, yeah, it was short lived. <laughs> it was short lived. Yeah. Um, but for 15 or 20 minutes, I had said in the discord, I said, Hey, don't get too excited about this. I'm not hearing like usually whenever big news like this comes out, you would get it and somebody has it. And then I would go and start checking with people because it's really easy for me to check when I have a name. When I don't have a name, it's really hard to guess who that is and then get information on what, what's yeah. going on. You didn't have Kelvin Leardham on I, the on I the didn't roller. have Kelvin. Yeah. He wasn't high yeah. on the list. I wasn't guessing. Um, I did I did talk about uh, Zavaleta, and I was like, oh, I wonder if Zavaleta is going to be one of the signings of the two things. Um, so at least not one of these two signings. Let's put it that way. Um, I don't yeah. know if he's, he's a signing later on, but I have gotten excluded <laughs> from these two signings, uh, these, these first ones this week. Um, and so I started checking and all of a sudden we got news back pretty quickly that no, not true. And I'm like, but there's no way that Costigan would be like that wrong, like that yeah. fast. And I've been there and I've told this story about Sasha Klushin whenever I said Sasha Klushin was coming together. It's like the worst day of my LA Galaxy reporterdom. Um, and I can laugh about it now because it's way off in the past, but looking at that. So, um, you look at Albert Rusnak, we were very excited because you're talking about a goal guy who's going to give you 20, you know, goals and assists plus 20. He's going to give it to you. Yeah. Guaranteed. And now you're thinking with Chicharito too, and that combination, and he plays in that central attacking midfielder and at $2.3 million, I probably would have been okay That's, if he was a designated player and people were like, no, but I'm like, Ooh, look at yeah. his track record. That That's the discussion we had. We said, well, on a TAM deal, that's, that's brilliant. You know, you, you take that all day and you, like you said, you get double digit, you get a plus 20 in, in the goals and assist column. You take that all day, especially with the Tam. And, it, you know, you say, well, take him as a DP. It doesn't sound as sexy and as flashy. But then at the end of the day, what matters most? Production. And if he's producing, uh, you know, th- then that's all you need. We have, we've had DPs in the past who haven't given you that production. So, you know, Albert Rusnak, while it's not, you know, like, <laughs> like I keep saying, it's not Messi, it's not Ronaldo, it's not, you know, Mo Salah. But at the same time, you know, it's 20 goals. It's, it's, you know, 13 goals, you know, 10 assists, something like that. You take that, you take that production. That's more than DPs have given us uh, in the past few seasons. So when you look at it that way, you know, it's not, it's not awful. It wouldn't be a terrible DP signing, but I'm also seeing in the chat, it looks like uh, I've heard Boca juniors in the mix. It seems like he, he may be looking, uh, you know, hurt Saudi Arabia as another option. So it looks like he may be wanting uh, a Tam deal is probably not something that's on the horizon. He's probably going to get paid. Uh, a, l- a little bit more if, well, if he's looking for something outside well, of that. In terms of craziness, if he's really looking to get paid, he doesn't take the TAM deal in Seattle, right? Because that basically yeah. tops him out, I think, at 1.6, and he's making 2.3. He's cutting it almost in half, right? So yeah. um, it's not in half, but a, a significant amount of money that that comes backwards um, with that. But uh, there were rumors that there were Saudi Arabian clubs that were looking at him, but the but the most off the wall one that happened almost immediately after this went sideways. And by the way, Costigan about 25 minutes later after he tweeted, it said, and now I'm hearing this won't happen, um, which then matched up to everything that I had heard. So uh, saying all that, you were like, Oh, okay. I, I you know, you, you adjust. And by the way, 
um, you know, John says, why don't you just ask him who his source was? And it's like, you can, you absolutely can. He's not going to tell you, but he, you can ask. I, if you and, ask me who my source is, I'm not going to tell you. And and if he shared who that source was, then you'll never get a scoop from him again because no one's ever going to tell him. Exactly. <laughs> again, yeah. So that's not, that's not it, how that works. <laughs> it, it is It is not, listen, I, I, I have been there um, and I've been in that position and you think you have it right and you think you have everything gone the correct right. You think you've checked all the boxes. I checked with two people and got the same answer twice. And it was like, wow, I, if you have two people who are telling you the same thing and you don't think that they're related in any way, then you have a pretty good handle on stuff. And maybe he... Again, maybe he just got his wires crossed. I'm sure he feels horrible about it. Um, but yeah, it's and and hopefully he won't do it again. But it, it's one of those. So anyway, so that's Rusnak. So Rusnak was coming to the LA Galaxy for approximately 25 minutes. He was a five-star rumor. Excuse me. He was a four-star rumor on the rumor tracker. Uh, and then he went down to a one-star rumor all within about 20 minutes. Um, and yes, John, you are correct. My source is Hammer. That is, that <laughs> and, is 100%. And, and, and my source is you. So yes, just it's a just vicious, a circle. circle. It's, it's a, a snake eating its own tail. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's awful. Um, so uh, it, it's, 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 it's one of these things. So anyway, so re- listen, if, if the LA Galaxy, and, I'm, and I imagine from what I'm hearing, at least, it seems like there was at least a talk about it. And I just don't think it ever progressed past anything past that. So Rusnak not coming to the LA Galaxy. That's not happening. Would have been great, though. That would have been a number 10. That would have been your 10. And I would have been on here jumping up and down and telling you the Galaxy hit a home run in the offseason if they got Albert Rusnak and was able to put him. The guy played like 30. He started 34 games last season. He started 34 games. Consistency. And contributed. 10 plus 10. 10 yeah. plus 10. He tears the galaxy apart. I mean, the best part about that whole thing would be that he wouldn't be tearing the galaxy apart anymore. <laughs> so, uh, Rusnak is great. Else. Um, so it's a, it's a, but I don't think he's coming to the LA galaxy. So anyway, that was that one. The other one, the other signing that we can talk about Eric here is Raheem Edwards. And this was reported by the athletic. Um, this is not something that I have any individual report. That's not true. I can tell you that this also seems like this will happen. Um, we are expecting it. And remember, I told you that we were expecting two signings to be announced this week. I am expecting the second signing is this one and tomorrow is Friday. You guys can do the math with all that. Yeah. Um, and so, also if you're going to believe Instagram, which you should always believe because it's never wrong. Right. Uh, <laughs> Raheem Edwards posted, you know, with Los Angeles as the tag location uh, that he's in town. So, you know, if he's not going to resign with his current team, then it's most likely if, you know, uh, reports were saying that he was not returning to LAFC and the LA galaxy were in the running. He's still in Los Angeles. That kind of tells you where he's going to end up landing. Yeah, um, he, he 26 years old, turns 27 in July. Uh, he's a left-sided winger slash wingback slash forward. He can basically play on the entire left-hand side. I was going to say, I've seen him listed at every position. I've seen <laughs> defender, I've seen midfielder, and then the MLS website has him as a forward. They so do. They absolutely It seems do. like he's a versatile guy. And he has been with a bunch of teams. Uh, one of the reasons they're saying, and the Athletic was reporting this, Tom Bogert was reporting this as well from MLSsoccer.com. Um, one of the reasons they're saying that he picked the LA Galaxy is because he does have a connection with Greg Vanny. And if you look at 2017, he played 21 games, started 10 games, got over a thousand minutes um, with Toronto and Greg Vanny in 2017. So he's familiar there. Um, Everybody wants to make this into something it's not, right? This is, as somebody said, if this was like the third or fourth signing the LA Galaxy made, I'd probably be a little bit more excited about it. But because it's like the first or second, it's it somehow holds a larger weight. And don't don't play that game. Yeah. Um, it's 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 not it's, a thing. I, but I should, but yeah. it's your first. Re- it's like Kelvin Leardom. It's like yeah, I know who that is. I know it's a solid pickup. But it just for the first signing, it just doesn't you know doesn't get doesn't get me super excited. You know, and I, he may be a great. Contributor. Same thing with Raheem Edwards. You know, I'm in, I'm involved in a uh, an LAFC kind of rivalry chat where we we banter and go back and forth with one another. And uh, they were very happy that they were losing <laughs> Raheem Edwards. They mentioned that uh, he could have been an actor on uh, Cinemax because he gets you very excited, uh, but but you never see him finish. So oh, okay, uh, you know, take you know, use your he's, imagination. He's, he's, he's Christian Wilhelmson. He's yeah. Christian Wilhelmson. He's oh, yeah. super. Hey, by the way, who won the LA Galaxy and MLS Cup? Let's just not well, forget that. It it, so. it just also feels like, but when you when you're a fan of a team, you're sometimes too close to it because I, I the comparison that I have him with is with Grand Seer. I think if Grand Seer went across the street, you'd probably have some fans who are like, "Good, he didn't produce for us." But it's like, you no, know, if you watch the season, Grand Seer turned it on. He figured it out. You know, he has the quickness. He has the skill. It's there. It's just a matter of kind of taking a next step and taking the next leap. So with Raheem Edwards. You know, it's obviously there's something there, uh, but it's just a matter of he can put it all together. And he has that familiarity with Vanny as well. I think one of his most 
productive seasons was with Vanny in 2017. Yep. So, you know, if he can kind of find some of that magic that he used to bring, uh, that can be a good thing. And he's also, you know, played 27 games, uh, you know, over 1300 minutes. So he, he played consistently. So not an injury concern. So it's something that you can look forward to having him be a contributor on this roster. Yeah. Um, it, again, it, the things that I always look at is like, okay, you know, how much is this going to cost? What are you looking at? What, what are sort of the things now? Um, he was listed as an international last year for LAFC he was an international player. He will not be an international player this year for the LA galaxy. He has a green card. Uh, the same with, uh, uh, Kelvin Leardam. He has a green card, not an international player. So the LA galaxy still have two international slots available. If we're counting, Carlos Harvey has already gotten a green card, which I still haven't got confirmed, but I keep asking. So I'll just keep asking do that um and and going for that so um that's where it is but also the salary demands on this are less than a hundred thousand dollars and you listen he may get a bump and raise you know from one contract to the other um this is also a free agent signing so again it's not going to cost the galaxy anything to go get him to put him on here he's a depth piece if he's making 110 or hundred twenty thousand dollars, it it does not that's not a big hit to the cap there's nothing that you really need to worry about that he's a depth piece you can put him in there on the left hand side and you can get a lot out of him so um that's sort of where we're at you know jorge Viafania is supposedly the starter there on the left back side and then you look at who's going to play left wing is it grand sir is it going to be somebody else we don't really know how that midfield shapes up yeah. yet um, so he's a depth piece. He will get some minutes. You want that. There's going to be people gone on international duties. There's all these things you want. This is every roster is comprised of 30 players. And this is going to be one of the 30 players that <laughs> yeah. Greg Vanny expects to get some production out of, but isn't putting the weight of the world on, you know, Raheem yeah. Edwards shoulders. To, to quote Tony Montana, you, you need people like me. So you need people like this on your roster. You know, they're, you're not going to, they're not all going to be superstars you need some people who are going to fill in those depth pieces and come in clutch in, in small moments and uh you know pitch in where it's necessary like you're right Villafania, we saw what happened last season uh it's probably not a bad idea to have someone who could fill in in that spot uh and someone who's versatile who can play in the midfielder who could play in the midfield is listed as a forward maybe he could play someone mentioned maybe he can play cam maybe he can go up front uh you know if, if to spell cabral who knows so uh you know we'll, we'll see where it can go with this yeah it's, it, it, yeah. i think it's a good signing it's fine. I'm both of these are fine. just absolutely fine. They are one. I mean, Leardam is a better. I think Leardam is going to end up being a really good signing. I think people are going to be surprised. And maybe he ends up playing some left back too. maybe you invert him a little bit. So he gets more time if Viafania is injured, that type of thing. His primarily he's primarily a right sided guy, but you could also put move Araujo up into the right wing as yeah. well. So there's some there's a lot of options there. Um, you know, Raheem Edwards is just as fine, just at a lower price point, And you're sort of like, OK, cool. That makes sense as well. So. Yeah, but, but that's also part of it at the lower price point that the, you're you're having a savings there. So if you're not paying, you know, the, the Mike Siani, you know, eight hundred thousand dollars for someone who's not going to contribute. That's one thing. But if he's, you know, comes at the right price tag, it's something that you can deal with. And you can say, OK, for the for the price, you're getting the production, uh, you know, that 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 you're paying for. Yeah. Um, a sports lover says who will be the, the central attacking midfielder who will be the central defensive midfielder that's a great question nobody knows uh, we imagine the CDM is probably Ravellison, uh, but at the same time the Galaxy were rumored to be in touch with a lot of CDMs so you know looking at the central defensive midfielder position Ravellison could play more of an 8 more we've talked about that and you get somebody else as more of a 6 and, um, and Leardham while well, the majority of his time is spent at the right back he has spent a little bit of time at CDM as well so maybe that's something that if uh, they want to convert them or have them, you know, switch things around, that's a possibility as well. The the big thing with Leardam and, and going back to sort of that before we move on to this TV deal, and I want to spend, you know, the last 10 minutes or so on this on this TV deal. Um, the big thing with Leardam is that Araujo's future really is a question mark, right? And it's not that, you know, we don't think he's going to go. We think he's going to go. We just don't know when that's going to be. Um, somebody said, would he be sold in January? That's unlikely. Um, and if they were, then they would be spending a lot more money on a right back than what they're going after, I think, for Leardam. Although I think Leardam is one of the best MLS right backs that was available. So you went and got a best available. It's just that, um, you know, I, I don't know how much they're going to lean on him in, in order to play that, but it could be a lot more. We talked about it again with Araujo being off with Mexico. That's one thing. If Araujo gets injured, yes. knock on wood, you know, that's another thing. You need depth in all these positions. You can't count on anything. Um, so you need to construct a team that has depth and backup and, and Leardam is that guy. But Julian Araujo is not long for the LA Galaxy. If he's not gone this summer, he's gone next winter. I don't think it's going to happen this winter. There's just not enough buzz around it. Um, and, and we'd already be hearing about it because yeah. right now it's the winter. The winter transfer window in Europe is open. You're hearing players be signed and picked up 
we we either hear rumors about it or there'd be something floating around. It's just it's not there it's yet. Too so, it's yeah, too so quiet. Yeah, so it's it's too quiet for that to be a thing. Uh, so all that being said, be be ready for the announcement t- tomorrow morning that uh, Araujo is leaving for. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> j- just snap your fingers. Um, no, so the uh, the Raheem Edwards were expected being it's the last day of the week, and I was told you there would be two this week. We're expecting Raheem Edwards on Friday, um, so those two should be in and locked in. That gives me, if I do my fancy math, um, twenty three players currently on the LA Galaxy roster, which gives them seven spots still to fill. Uh, there is a designated player spot open. I have seven internationals taken up right now, but as soon as Carlos Harvey confirms that he has a green card, we can take that to six. So even with the two guys that they added today, again, smart with their international slots, yeah. right? They came in here. They did what they needed to do. Um, the LA Galaxy have the ability here to sign a whole bunch of players, still seven players on there. If you want to know your average age right now, Eric, 24.22. It's a young team. The it's a young team. The if you median remove, age. If you remove question from that, that goes to what? 17 probably 18? so um <laughs> leardam at 31 is a little more of like the experienced veteran right so you have him he is an experienced veteran yeah. so that's a good one there uh you know chicha chicha's 33 questions 36 um by the way i think it's hysterical that uh that whenever i stand next to sasha question that i am technically older than him he is much more of a man probably than i will ever be in terms <laughs> of like maturity and just having it all together i it cracks me up i feel like a little boy I'm like, oh, yeah, no, this guy, there's, a, there's an adult in the room He's here. Got Everybody together, stop yeah. for a second, you know? <laughs> um, listen to the adult. So, um, but that same, being said, I think Alex, looks like they're putting something together here. About $14.7 million right now in guaranteed salary. We're using last year's numbers um, to sort of fill these out. But 14.7, there's still some room to spend some money there. Um, and I think we've talked about that uh, a whole bunch. Is the LA Galaxy have cleared over $6 million so far um, with with releases and loans ending and all that stuff. The the line, the last thing, I, and I hate to end on pes- pessimistic hammer talk, but e, e- super has mentioned that earlier. And I, I wanted to mention earlier, cause I talked about with you on the text, the players that they've signed, uh, you know, Leardham from inter Miami. So there is a connection, you know, related to David Beckham there. Uh, you know, Raheem Edwards, you know, knows Vanny. So it makes you think about the scouting network, you know, who are the galaxy bringing in, you know, are, is there a scouting network network? Are they going with guys they know? So that's the only thing that makes me a little bit nervous, but look what Bruce does. Go look what Bruce does. He just got everybody who ever played for him and he brought them back. I mean, <laughs> ah, all right, but so, it still makes me nervous because it, it makes should. Me, yeah, it should. We're, we're not <laughs> thinking outside the box. It's all, we, I know this guy from something. I know this guy, you know, from three years ago, ah, I, I, you know, where, where's going to be that, where's that DP going to come from? Who's, who's going to be the player? that comes in and is that splash or who's going to be the, the cam that we've all been waiting for someone to pull the strings or a game changer on the wing. Uh, just makes me a little bit nervous. I don't know that I have full trust that this, uh, you know, this front office is going to be able to, to land the big fish. Yeah. Uh, John says, uh, Julian Araujo, does he have a shot for the Mexican world cup team? If so, moving to another continent four months before world cup expedite, you know, would it expedite his growth? Seems a risk for him unless the country is no consideration. John, thanks for the $5 uh, super chat. Yeah. Um, absolutely. That's one of the reasons that I don't think he's going to move this summer I, again. I think it's gonna be next winter, but I still think you need a backup. Just see, what if somebody comes to the LA galaxy and is like, listen, we're going to give you $25 million for Julian Araujo right now in the summer because we need to make a difference for our team because, you know, we were just barely made it above relegation last year. Are you going to turn down $25 million? You have no. to plan for whenever somebody's going to come up with the emergency suitcase of cash. Um, and I think that Araujo being who I think is one of the best players on the LA galaxy, one of the best right backs in major league soccer, one of the maybe best right back prospects in North America um, and probably CONCACAF there's a lot of things to sit there and say he could go at any time. So you sort of need to be um, ready to pull the emergency yeah. parachute. And I think as far as him having a shot for the world cup, I think the timing is perfect for him. He just got his first cap what, a, a month ago, right? He, he looked great. And so now uh, you have to think about, okay, if, if he continues to play like he played last season, there's no reason why, you know, Tata Martino won't continue to call him into the, at least the camp where he can prove himself and show himself. Uh, and at least become, you know, a backup, if not, you know, probably not going to be the starting right back for Mexico, but he, he might be in the mix. But if he plays so well with the Galaxy that a team does come in in the summer and wants him, I don't think that takes away. I think that only adds, they say, look at this player. He had a great season with the LA Galaxy. The team from from Europe or, so, or South America came in. They splashed the cash on him. I think that only makes him more attractive and more likely to go to the World Cup. So I think he absolutely, the timing is right for him to, I I, I, th- I could see him on the World Cup squad for, for Mexico uh, this winter. This winter. 
Yeah. Oh, imagine saying that. Well, next winter, but you know what I mean? Yeah. This year, the, this, this calendar this year, year, this year, it's a world cup year is what yeah. you want to say. Um, Julian Araujo to Newcastle to save him from relegation. Well, if they back up that truck of money, <laughs> sure. They've, yeah, so there, that's, I'm curious to see what Newcastle is going to look like in, it's in so much fun three in two months. It's going to be fascinating. It's so much fun not caring anything about that league whatsoever and watching it just like you know sort of uh, go around. They're going to play be playing youth players here pretty soon with all the Omicron outages, and they're like they're saying no, you have to play, and so it's going to be like youth guys who apparently they're going to waive their experience so you can play youth teams for these like FA Cup and and a whole bunch uh, of care, you know care of cup stuff. Yeah, oh, so much fun. Um, anyway, so we have that the. The other thing I wanted to get to before we closed out, and I think it's an interesting one to sort of follow, is that if you've looked on your schedule for the LA Galaxy, it has shown the national TV games. And the LA Galaxy have a bunch of national television games to open up the uh, the, the season. Uh, the big deal is that the LA Galaxy don't have a local, quote-unquote, local broadcast game until April 16th. Okay. Now I've been trying to follow the local TV deal and what's going on. And here's what I've been able to piece together without talking to the LA galaxy about it. So understand I haven't talked to the galaxy about it, but I piece some things together is that it looks like the galaxy. First of all, I would like to be very, very clear because I have to constantly correct people because they're, they're being wrong. Um, that's, I, that was, that was me. Yes. You pay attention. I will say this again. The LA <laughs> look galaxy, at me. look at me, look at what I'm saying. Read my lips. The LA Go galaxy, the LA galaxy and spectrum contract is over with that's done it was done last year okay so no more uh there is no spectrum coming up this year unless they decide to do a bridge year which we talked about on this we said hey maybe spectrum will do a bridge year i would imagine that maybe you know they kind of do it for free either spectrum would just pay for the production costs or the la galaxy would pay for the production costs and spectrum would still show it because it's a continuity thing and it's going to only be for one year because we know mls is changing to a, a national rights um, distribution program where somebody's going to get all the rights. Hopefully I have my fingers crossed. That's going to be like ESPN, but the, the numbers that we're seeing there are like more than three times what the national TV deal was last time. So it's about $90 million. Um, I think a year last time. And this time right now it's being reported that, that national TV deal, that's not just national TV games, but the local broadcast as well. So every team's game going to be put on a platform of some sort somewhere, um, whether that's ESPN plus or Amazon or NBC or Paramount or you know, there's a whole bunch of people who are possibly yeah. looking at taking all these games. Um, but whenever they do that, it was like 300 and something million dollars. And so you can sort of go through this and, and take a look at it. But the problem is the LA galaxy as of right now do not have a home that I'm aware of. Okay. So if you're looking for a local broadcast, which again, you don't need to look for until April 16th, if it, ha if April 16th was tomorrow, I would imagine the galaxy would be like putting it on their YouTube page because there is no local TV deal in input. I heard that they were shopping it around. They probably went to everybody, right? You go to all the local people and you're like, Hey, who wants to buy some of this? Right. And everybody's like, have you seen the LA galaxy television numbers? You'd have to pay us to put it on, which by the way, is one of the things that the team across the way has to do as well. It's basically they eat the production costs, they do what yep. they can. And then they basically give the television uh, rights away for free. And I, I forget what the channel is called. Channel 13, you know, that that's the local KDOC, KDOC or, or whatever that is. You know, the that's how they run their games. They kind of do like a makeshift studio and makes it work. Or, or, you know, you find a Bally Sports or something like that. Someone who maybe just takes it on for a year. That's a possibility. Uh, but you're right. The Spectrum, you know, could continue it just because they have the infrastructure in place. But I'll also go back to what I said at the beginning of the show with the preseason game and the closed door scrimmages where it's just on YouTube. And that's where people go. You know, I think Totino and Kobe Jones have called those preseason games on YouTube in the past. So that wouldn't be that crazy either. You just throw it on YouTube, have a skeleton crew, just the, the, you know, have some announcers. The quality is not that quality is going to be bad. Yes. Yeah, the quality will be bad. But at the same time, it's better than nothing. And, uh, you know, that also instead of going to Happy Calvin, you get, you know, the Galaxy. Do it directly on the Galaxy's page. I think yeah. that, that might not be a terrible move. Fans would be very happy if the games were streamed on YouTube and they just kind of had their own little makeshift uh, you know, because it seems like the production that goes into, you know, from what I've seen in the, those uh, guys from across town doesn't seem like it takes much. And it seems like what's at, you know, Dignity Health Sports Park, I feel like they can create a nice little studio show or in studio show, pregame, postgame. I, I feel like it's there. They could make that work. Pretty, I mean, you, pretty you and I are available for that. To, to, uh, well, to the pre and I'm post not, game. but yeah, you I, are. You I are. could be bought. We've, we, yeah. we've made it very clear that I could be bought. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> by the way, for people asking the cost of production for a game is roughly, let's say 30 to $35,000. Let's just say that that's around that. I don't know a hundred percent that's close, but 
I was told by people who were in the industry that that's probably what it's around whenever Spectrum does a game. That's how much it costs them. You have to have a truck. You have to have the transmitters, all that fun stuff that you put together. You have to have the camera people. You put it together, and, and this is what you get. That's the cost of production per game. So um, one of the reasons it's so difficult for the Galaxy to get a deal, and maybe they could get a deal, although the sports landscape is not what it was whenever the LA Galaxy signed a deal with Time Warner Cable um, that made them the richest television contract in Major League Soccer, and nobody ever came close after that, um, is that um, it's only for one year. Nobody wants to invest in anything for one yeah. year. It's not worth the time and the money for them because they know they're not going to have the rights the year after. Um, so that's what makes it is this short period of time, this one year. I would also say that if this was going to be a five year deal where you were going out shopping, they would be having the same issues because the it's, television numbers, listen, all the people who are in the chat room, you're all amazing. We love you. Okay. You will, you go to the games. Okay. You don't watch them on TV. You watch them on TV whenever they're away. But again, there's like a hundred of you in the chat room. Okay. Let's and just, this is, and yeah. we're going, you know, inject full LA galaxy into my veins. This is the top, top 1% of the 1% yeah. who are diehards. Yeah. yeah. So it, it means to, to make a TV audience to, to, to crack the Nielsen ratings, uh, you know, the COG numbers aren't there. Uh, when the, in galaxy numbers, even if you extrapolate that, that's not quite there either. Logan, to Logan, be- Logan asks a good question, by the way, will Kobe Jones and Joe Tatino still be the announcers? I would imagine they will. Okay, I can't makes guarantee sense. that, but it makes sense that they would do that. I would find it a very weird scenario that would put the LA Galaxy basically in charge of production themselves, in charge of streaming, in charge of distribution, and not have Joe and Kobe do yeah. the games. That would <laughs> that would be ridiculous. Um, so and it is yeah. also who, whoever does it, it would behoove them to bring Kobe and Joe along because that's how you're going to get people to continue to buy in and to watch. I think it, it, you're going to have a weird people will watch because, like I said, it's the diehards, but That'd be a weird thing to go away from <laughs> the people who have been doing it for as many years as they've been doing it. It's not, I, I would, they tried that. It, there's remember, no way. remember they yeah. tried that at the beginning of the time <laughs> when it did not go well. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so that, no, that's where, that's where you sit and that, that's where it is. I just want you to be prepared for this because we don't, and I asked the galaxy if there was a local TV and basically they said, we're still working on it. Right. Or they're working through it. I should probably quote exactly. We're working through it. I, you know that yes, working on it. You know, whenever somebody sends you an email and you haven't touched anything yet, and you're like, "Yeah, I'm working on it." You know, that was <laughs> that's not the case. No, I believe the Galaxy have per worked my, on it. I know per my sh- last email. Yeah, per my last. Um, I know that they've shopped it to Spectrum. I know that they've shopped it to Bally's. Um, I don't know that either of those were serious at all. So, I mean, you're talking about local sports networks. That's who they're going out after. Yeah. So they have done that. Uh, they've done their job. I just don't think there's a market for them. I, I it's just I, I can't knowing the landscape that we have and. It's crazy because if you go back to Time Warner whenever they signed that deal, that was huge. We had the president of Time Warner Sports on our podcast. That's how stupid huge it was, right? The president (laughs) of Time Warner Sports who was going out and making billion dollar deals for the Dodgers and, you know, I forget how hundreds of millions of dollars for the uh, Lakers and stuff like that came on our podcast, I think in between meetings when he was in Las Vegas to talk to us about the deal and the whole deal. So they went ridiculously big and I think they're getting like 5.1 or 5.3 million dollars a year from that deal, but that's over with. They don't have that money coming in anymore. Um, so they have to figure out what to do for this one year and then it will be a league wide thing where it'll get distributed and everybody will make some money again. So I think this year, the galaxy are probably taking a bath on at least $5 million worth of income in terms of the sponsorships from the, from the television deal. Uh, and then they may be spending more money cause they're also going to have to produce these games and do that. So it could be a negative, uh, column in their, in their sort of, uh, you know, revenues whenever you look at yeah. everything. If you've ever watched ESPN three and listened to some of those, you know, Euro qualifiers, you know, Cyprus versus, uh, you know, North Macedonia, the, <laughs> the production isn't always the best. So it doesn't take a lot. It's I, <laughs> I know it, sometimes it seems difficult and it seems like it's a big, a big cause, but there, there will be coverage, even if it's not necessarily, you know, top notch, top of the line stuff, you know, you can still get coverage and, uh, and, and we'll get by, we'll survive for a year before so, Amazon and Jeff Bezos just buys everything. Somebody uh, MLS said- included. Yeah, somebody said we were uh, we were discussing, I think this on Twitter or something, and somebody goes, what would it take for like fans to just stream the game from their phones? Like if you had one person on every side of the field, you know, I'm like, <laughs> I could probably put that together with like the equipment I have. So if the Galaxy want to pay me to go ahead and, you know, and produce that with like streaming stuff, you got somebody close, the wide angle. I think we could really pull something together nice. uh, here, right? I mean, come on, you don't have to be fancy anymore. We, we do this show. Say- we're certainly not fancy. I was, I was going to say we've we've uh, we made it work with uh, you're calling a, a FIFA video game 
commentating that. I think I think we've proven we're we're ready. We're ready for the next steps. Just by saying, way, just throwing it out there. By the way, I've seen this comment a bunch of times, um, and I'll I'll say it here: the biggest team in MLS, and we can't get anyone to show our games on TV. It's an LA problem, and you say, but LA's and I saw it, LA's the capital well, of like television and all the yeah. I know that's the problem. Is there's a lot of opportunities and a lot of better, um, you know, uh, properties out there to to waste your time on, and it's the one year. And, and to your point, going back to Time Warner, history will not look back kindly on the Time Warner deal that created a lot of a lot of issues for Dodger fans and the, the you know going back. You look at Southern California, it's Dodgers and Lakers town. And so when you have you okay, you think I'm going big, I'm buying these these two properties. But then when you black out those games, and you know half of the population can't watch it, that made a lot of people upset, left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. So this is not, it was not a Galaxy issue alone; it was a Time Warner and sports issue. They really you know rubbed the Dodgers fan base the wrong way, the Lakers fan base the wrong way, the Galaxy fan base the wrong way. So it really uh, it, was, it was a great move for them, you know, that they thought. But at at the end, it ended up being. Uh, a bit of a disaster for from a fan's perspective. Who's paying for cable anymore? Remember, they thought that they were going to be able to charge these oh. huge upcharges and in, in onto these sports packages, right? They were big, and it was one of the most expensive sports packages in like the United States in order to get some of this stuff. So anyway, that's where we're at with the TV deal. I'll keep you updated as far as as, as long as I know. I, there's going to be a solution to this. I wouldn't panic. Nobody needs to sit there and oh my god, I'm not going to be yeah. able to watch the game. Don't stop. Not- you will. You will find something. We will get They're- you there. They're not gonna not show the games. Exactly. Those not non-national televised games. They're they're gonna show them. We're gonna figure out a way. Even if it's Josh with his GoPro strapped to his head, like that TikToker with the trains. It's gonna yes. be you, and then you're gonna go show your face half the mm-hmm. way. Yes. What's that guy's name? I need to give him a shout out. I don't that know. guy's the best. I don't remember, loves- but he, he's awesome. Isn't Andy something? <laughs> I think it might be. Andy. I don't know. But don't know. If, if you're on TikTok, there's a guy who loves trains and just has a camera on himself, and it's the I, the angle is not flattering, but it's no, hilarious. He doesn't to watch. care. He doesn't. I, I, he I, loves life, Eric. He I just wish life. something brought me as much joy as trains bring that hat. You could do that if you go to Galaxy Games. You could put the camera <laughs> on your head, and it would just be this like look the whole time. In fact, please, please do that. Um, All right, I have my next idea when I go live on uh, Instagram. Uh, real quick, I just want to play this uh, Lear Dam video. It's nine seconds long, but he says <laughs> hello, and so I'm going to play it for everybody. Eric, you won't hear it, and I won't hear it, but everybody else will hear it. So here is uh, Lear Dam uh, saying he can't wait to play for the Yellow Galaxy. Hi, Galaxy fans. Kelvin Lear Dam here. Um, I just want to let you guys know that I'm very excited to be part of this club. I'm looking forward to the coming season and uh, see you guys soon. All right, there you go. Uh, the The man is is in the building. He's ready to rock and roll, um, which I like that. It kind of looks like he's in Miami, which would make sense because he was with Miami. <laughs> he was from Miami. Yeah, he was, that's, he, where he's coming from. that's where he's coming from. So oh. um, we'll see. Oh, uh, Enrique Sh- says, by the way. Yeah. Do you want to hit it? Go ahead. Well, I was going to say Cameron says that Francis was the guy's the train guy's name. Francis. That dude. <laughs> that dude is my my spirit animal. Um, Enrique third, says. Yeah, sa- go for it. Says, I want to bring anyone this up know if we're getting the third kit? Eric, didn't you text me this today? I, I just texted you this. I, since you're a guy with sources, maybe you can ask the right people. But uh, there's a story that came out that Austin may be getting a third kit. Atlanta, they said, has confirmed reached the 100K sales threshold that they will be getting a third kit. Austin has not been confirmed, but it's a possibility. And I just was thinking out loud, the community kit was a huge success last season. I know people who bought two, three of them. And so I would imagine that the Galaxy, uh, you know, may be close to that number. Maybe 100K doesn't seem like it's impossible that the Galaxy sold that many jerseys. So maybe is a third jersey a possibility? So maybe, you know, if you're a guy with sources, maybe you can ask the right people. I know they don't release those numbers. I just need a yes or a no. And then other people are asking about kits in general. We're kind of getting to that season where, uh, you know, they're going to start leaking. We're going to start seeing if I have... people are reporting and having games in early February. I would imagine the next two to three weeks we're going to be seeing uh, yes. New home kits for this season. Yes. So two fronts. I can answer some of your third cut question because I did ask after you texted me um, and I do have it's not a it's not a complete answer, but it's an answer. <laughs> it's an answer. That's all I need or, or of some sort. It's it's not it's not even really an answer, but it's a progression of things. So um, one, I can answer that. I can tell you that the kits I am doing my best to see how we can be involved in a kit launch as well. And help out in any way that we can. So um, I've been researching that and looking at it. It will be MLS controls the kit launch dates, if you imagine, because there's 28 teams and everybody wants to have their own little slice of the pie and announce their little thing and do that. So MLS sort of dictates that. So as soon as I find out when that date is, if I'm allowed to talk about it, I will talk about it. And if not, I will hit my butt off like I normally do. Um, So, you know, that's something to keep a look on. Uh, I've been told 
that the Galaxy Kit is a little bit of a departure from previous, and I don't know exactly what that means, but our Discord has talked about it enough. Yes. Okay. Well, I, I will say some digging that I have done is that the Adidas Club Collection is going to be a little bit of a throwback to the 2006 kind of World Cup, their their international kits that they released in 2006 for that World Cup. I've heard that a lot of clubs are getting that similar style. So if you look at it, it kind of has curved curves on the inside of the jersey. So I don't know if that's what it's going to look like, but it, that's what I've heard that some clubs are getting that treatment on their kits. I don't know if that's a European-based thing or if that's just an Adidas worldwide thing because we did see with MLS their 25th anniversary kits, you didn't see it that with many other kits around the world. It's kind of unique to MLS. So I don't know if MLS is getting their own unique treatment or if they're getting what other clubs around the world are getting. I have heard there is no sash. People are asking in the chat room if there's no sash. I've heard there's no sash. That being said, I can't confirm that. I don't know. But that's been the most thing I've heard the most of is that there's no sash. So um, that's that's sort of where we're at. So the first kit here. Now, you're th- it will be coming out. It is designed. It is there. It is ready to go. As soon as MLS, yes, as soon as MLS <laughs> says go, uh, it would be my it, it would be my intent that you know you and I have a show that night uh, talks about the kit and all the details and do all that stuff and do it specifically on a kit release, um, and that's my goal. We'll see if we can do that um, because I'll need a lot of help if that's going to be the case. So yeah. we'll, we'll the, the the galaxy will have to help us out here. Um, so that's the first thing. The third kit. I was talking and I said, you know, have the Galaxy hit that 100K? And the answer was, I don't know. They don't always give us the best numbers on that stuff. Understood. And I told you, like, we trust them to give us numbers, but they never actually give us numbers. They just say, well, you went over 100K. No idea whether or not they actually went over 100K. They never show their math. They never prove it out, <laughs> right? So they could very well say, Austin, you're getting a third kit. The 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 big deal here is that there is anywhere between a 12 to 18 to 24 month lag on this stuff. Correct. So Austin getting a third kit means that it was already planned for at least in some over the last 12 months at the very minimum. So again, I question whether or not how this sort of comes about and how they do these things. Um, For the LA Galaxy, if the community kit pushed it over the 100K mark, I would imagine that you would see a result of that, not this year, but next year. Correct. And so those are those. Are, and this was a discussion I had with somebody who was who kind of knew what was going on, but, you know, wasn't 100 percent. So it's it's a uh, we're assuming some things. Um, so this is where you're at with the third kit. I've not been told the LA Galaxy went over 100K. Nobody's made that announcement. I don't think that announcement's coming. Um, but I would be very surprised if that community kit, which was uh, worldwide uh, acclaim to sort of how it looked, it doesn't pass the 100K mark be very surprised especially because i think i have like six here i mean yeah. there's you know. and with chicharito when being one of the top jersey jersey sales as well and it just seems like that was a successful launch it just seems like if you're if 100k was a threshold it seems like the community community kit definitely should have been if not passing it in the neighborhood and so i think if they wanted to fudge the numbers as well that i think that would be okay <laughs> to make it work but great point about it be kits having a two to three year minimum lead out you know, we know some of these, you know, Adidas has, uh, they released that article. Sometimes they have four or five years in advance. They've already kind of planned out these templates and where they're going with it. And that's kind of why some people already know that it's going to be the 2006 template for a lot of other clubs around Europe. So you're right. If, if you think about when Austin announced that they were going to be a club and there was a lot of buzz behind it, that wasn't last year. I believe that was a year and a half ago or something like that. So right. the timing kind of works out to that favor. So if the Galaxy Community Kit launch was successful last year, maybe at the halfway point this year at the earliest, because I think that's what happened with Atlanta as well. It wasn't revealed at the beginning of the season. It was kind of a mid-season reveal as well. So uh, at best, not you know mid-season, but you know, if, it's, if it is going to happen, it might be next season as well. So uh, not 100% satisfied with the answer, but I'm glad we have an answer at least we somewhat. Ha- we have, we have a discussion. We have an ongoing <laughs> discussion now, and we will, we will continue. It's on the radar. I, I will tell you, I think if the LA Galaxy want to have even a mildly successful kit, that if it's crisp but it's clean, then I think that, that that'll go a long way to complementing a very good, you know, second kit, the the community kit. So um, for me, it needs to have blue and it needs to have yellow and it needs to have white in it. And if yeah. you cut, if you cover those bases, <laughs> and you put a crest on it, you're gonna you're probably gonna be pretty good. I yeah. mean, I, I don't think it's rocket science here what we're trying to do. <laughs> it's Adidas, so, you know, it, three three blue stripes, you know, and uh, a galaxy logo on that, some yellow 
piping. Can, can we go back good? to that holographic uh, galaxy logo I that had like, like that. the MLS cups in it and stuff like that, and just that like one. the little quasars that were. That was, I think, that was one of the one of the top ones. So anyway. All right. Um, do, 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 do. Christian, by the way, before we get out, says, what happened to the Honey logo on the kit from the non-LA shop buyers? I don't know, because I'm never getting involved in anything like that ever again. Okay? Well, that's that goes back to my point about them solving the issue with the one tweet saying, your, your tickets are included. Don't worry about it. We never heard resolution. You were supposed to be the middle person. We never got a resolution that was never don't, available. Don't, never happened. So don't uh, if, if we're doing the, the kit launch, if we're, if we're doing the kit launch, hopefully we'll be, have more success. I don't want to be in the middle. <laughs> the, see, now I don't even want to do the kit launch. Good. Now yeah. I'm like, no, nope, that's too much work. Patch. I'm out. I'm out. I'm just, it's going to be a giant honey patch. That's all it is. Um, and then um, someone also did ask about Herbalife. And I think last I checked, there was a 10 year extension around 2012. So I don't I don't think this is the last year of Herbalife because there may have even been an extension since then, and they've been a partner with so long. I don't imagine Herbalife is going anywhere. Definitely not this season. Not this season, as far as I know. I haven't been told. Let's put it that way. I have not paid attention, so that could be one of those surprise things um, that gets you know. Oh, by the way, Herbalife is gone, but I don't believe that's the case. So I also um, doubt it. They're yeah. so ingrained in the galaxies. They just they're and like, oh, let's I don't just keep them, doing it. Let's just yeah, keep I don't doing imagine it. them going away from it. They'd have to be thrown in federal prison in order for that not to happen anymore. But hey, so that gets closer every day. It's possible. So there it's we possible. go. All right. <laughs> um, I think that that will do it. I think we're good. Eric, is there anything else that you want to talk about or can we uh, can we go? We're good to call it. We've covered it all. Good. I'm glad. All right. Uh, tell people where they can find you. All right. As always, you can find me on Twitter at Hammer EV. You can also find me on Instagram at Galaxy Profile. That's Galaxy P R O F O U L. And if you're not already following Gochella on, t- on Twitter, that's Golchella. G O A L Chella C H E L L A. All right, there you go. All your uh, Golchella information. If you're looking for me on Twitter at J Gessman, J G U E S M A N, and of course at Galaxy Podcast, corner of the galaxy.com. That's where we're going to show you the news, our podcasts, YouTube videos, all that fun stuff is right there for you. LA Galaxy getting, what is this? It's six, there's nine days basically until the LA Galaxy report for physicals. Uh, the LA Galaxy quickly closing in on a very, very busy and condensed preseason. We're going to get you all the way up to kick off with New York City FC and all the way through this on our 14th season of coverage here the Corner of the Galaxy. All right, for Mr. Eric, the Portuguese Hammer Vieira, I'm Josh Pato. Guess when you've been listening, you've been watching to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.